Hi, this is Vicki Gilford Parnell, and I have come to share a dream with you I received from Jesus Christ this morning. And I did not think I was going to share this, but the Lord had said it needed to be shared. It, it, it is somewhat personal, but it also shows the power of his, his, his children uniting in prayer and what it can bring about. I had this dream, felt like a trip, <laughs> had this dream this morning, woke up first at 5.55 a.m. because of the, the nature of the dream, which I always pray about all of them. I started to write some of it out, and then, then I felt I need to pray, I need to pray. So I was praying, and I fell back to sleep. It is not normal for me to fall back to sleep. But I woke up again at 9.02, and usually, and then I had the dream again. I'm asking you to take the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and try the spirits. Try the spirits. And Lord willing, I'm going to discuss a couple of verses that keeps being thrown around at anybody using the prophetic. Even if it's their first dream ever, or such like. The Lord keeps bringing up to my attention needs to be addressed. So with his help, I will do that with the Holy Spirit's leading. This dream is entitled, The Antichrist Confrontation Dream. The Antichrist Confrontation Dream. And again, the Lord Jesus Christ gave me the title, gave me the dream. I've tried it. I've laid it before the Lord, discerned it, prayed about it. When I start writing, I'm standing on John 14, 26, 1 John 2, 27. The Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. That Christ Jesus has spoken, that Father God. But before we go any further, let's pray. There's power in prayer. And right now, I bind and cancel any evil prayers in Jesus Christ's name. Father God, I come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. That mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ given to him above all others. Jesus Christ, I pray and ask that you answer these prayers. These, these, the prayers, and I'm asking Holy Spirit, you lead them so I do not pray anything against Father God's will. And I ask this in Jesus Christ's name, but I'm asking you answer them, Jesus. My love, I'm asking you answer them so Father will be glorified in all things as John 14, 13. And verse 14 says, that will happen and your word cannot lie. Now, Lord, I've already prayed and asked this to be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility with no retaliation. And you have assured me you will do that, that it will be under, under stealth and invisibility until the moment it needs to be released and seen to whoever, whenever. I have nothing to hide, but Father God, I'm asking this so we can get it up without any hindrances in Jesus Christ's name. Now, I pray that every person that hears this would have eyes to see your truth, ears to hear your truth, and a heart softened to receive your truth in Jesus Christ's name. And if this is not you, you shut it down. Shut it down if this is not from you, Father God, Jesus Christ. I do not want to speak in any other name but yours. And if I'm not speaking in your name you correctly, in your authority, you shut me down. I care too much for the people to, to knowingly or unknowingly mislead them. So, Father God, I give my life to you and I surrender and submit to you in every way. In Jesus Christ's name, you search me, search deep, and if there's something wrong, you write it. I give you permission, tear it out, rip it out. You're the healer. You can fix it. I don't want anything in my life that's going to displease or cause shame to your name, your great name. All forms of communication uttered against this ministry, against me and my family, against Alfredo Judith and all the members of the My Lovely Jesus Ministry training team. I hereby, in Jesus Christ's name, resend them. Yes, I do in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. I cancel them in all evil gatherings, all people, all human agents, all enemies of the all agents of the enemy, spiritual or physical, or combined. 
In Jesus Christ's name, I command you to disperse and not regroup. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, standing on the authority and the power of Jesus Christ himself, who lives in me. That power granted to me, Luke 10, 19, as an heir and joint heir with the kingdom of God, not to be abused, but be used for his glory. So that I can live a victorious life and I can do all I've called to do, which is to warn and reach the lost. It's not for my glory. It's for you, Father God. I'm nothing. I'm just a, a, a mouthpiece that you're using. And I'm grateful and humble that you've chosen to allow me to be used that way. But I would still do my best in whatever position you put me in because I love you. I love you, Jesus Christ. I love you, Father God, Holy Spirit. I love you. My life is yours for wherever, whatever you need me. Your will be done. Every gizmo, gadget, weapon, wave device, Lord, they've been trying to slam them all day. Just send it right back in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask for angel bearers to be re to be constructed. And Lord, Father God, it talks about a hedge you put around Job, letting down that hedge so he could be tempted. I'm asking that fortified hedge be put around us, Lord, and around this ministry. And again, Lord, everything, anything that's sold into this ministry that's meant to be evil, that exchanges hands, as soon as it touches ministry, it will be blessed. Whether it be a one dollar donation or whether it be something sent, Father God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The power of your name, Romans eight twenty eight, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise and thank you because I am no longer ignorant of the enemy's devices. All glory to you. It does not matter what anybody thinks. Family, friends, I don't care. Because the fact of the matter is, it's my personal relationship with you, Jesus Christ, that matters. It does not matter what family, friends, anyone else thinks. It doesn't. As long as I'm pleasing you, as long as I'm staying in this word, as long as I am not totally isolating but if you call me to totally isolate, I will do that too. I keep hearing iron sharpeneth iron. It surely does. But there's a time to refrain from other people so that you can get your direct word from Father God Almighty. I had somebody do that to me for a few years. But you know what? I understand. Because I'm doing it now and I'm going to stay this way until you say otherwise, Father God. Because this is what you're calling me to do. Separate. 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 Your will be done, Father, in all things. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, this dream came forth. Lord, your will be done. I praise you in all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. At 5.55 a.m. And at 9.02 a.m. I had it twice. It is a little long. So... Seek the Lord Jesus Christ about this. Try and discern it. See if you're supposed to listen to it. Again, if you have an issue with me drinking or any way this is done, Jesus Christ has done provided the perfect solution. There will be a PDF or you can pull the transcript off of it that you can still get the word. All right, God bless. It all started when I found myself standing in front of the C-E-R-N facility. In Switzerland. I wasn't there but for a moment. My eyes were drawn to the statue in front of. a. My eyes were drawn to the statue. In front of it. Of a four armed false god. It's the goddess Shiva. The destroyer of death and chaos. She is grotesque to look at. As I know her heart is black. This whole grand facility above and below. Ground is dedicated to the fallen ones, the fallen angels they serve and whose technology they use in their scientific work and discoveries. As I'm standing here, I begin praying in Jesus Christ's name for protection, pleading his precious blood over my whole being completely for understanding of why I'm here and what I'm needed to know. For the enemy to be bound, their plans thwarted, with no retaliation for all that concerns this situation. In addition, 
I ask, excuse me, I ask to be covered by the precious Holy Ghost in his barrier of invisibility and stealth, unless for some reason I am needed to be seen or heard. As I finished praying, I whispered, Please, Jesus Christ, my love, tell me why I am here and where is it I need to go. Down. You need to go down to the hidden part of the facility below. I heard my sweet Savior's voice reply back to me. Okay, I replied. But how, I asked. Suddenly, I felt the ground begin to gently shake beneath my feet. I looked to my left and I saw an opening has appeared in the very earth. I walked over to the opening and it appeared to be going downward. There is what looks like a clear tubing inside the hole. Sit down, little daughter, on the edge of the opening, then launch yourself into the tube. No harm shall come to you and you will be taken where you need to go. My Holy Spirit is with you, and my blood covers you. Do not fear. My angel army stands ready should you need any assistance against the enemy within their stronghold. Do not fear, little daughter, for I go with you too inside your heart. My sweet, lovely Jesus Christ spoke to me from the heavens above in a strong yet gentle voice. Excuse me. Sorry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Okay, I replied, even though I didn't like the idea of sliding down a tube inside the earth in the enemy's territory with no control at all of my movements. Talk about taking a leap of faith, I said quickly to myself as I sat down at the opposite, at the opening's edge. I looked up to the dark sky with stars still evident toward heaven and said, I trust you, Jesus, my love. I trust you. Then I launched my body into the clear tubing with my arms raised above my head. I slid rapidly through the earth, praying in Jesus Christ's name the whole time, when suddenly an area widened and I come to the end of my tube ride journey. My body shot out of the tube and I fell to the ground. Only it's not the hard surface of rock and dirt. But instead, I landed on something soft. I looked down to see what it is and it felt like a thick, soft mattress. But it's not. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it resembled a fluffy cloud. Whatever it is, I said out loud, I'm grateful and thankful because it had never entered my mind. How would I stop myself when the tube ended? I didn't have to because I knew if Father God or my love Jesus Christ was telling me to do something, then the details of the how they would have already taken care of. That's what faith is all about. Excuse me. Lord's tell me drink the water instead, instead of the milk. So thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As I make my way to the edge of the soft substance beneath me, I'm amazed at its softness. As soon as I scoot off the edge and stand up, the mattress-like cloud begins disappearing, and it, as if dissolving before my very eyes. Now what, I ask out loud. All of a sudden, I feel the ground shaking gently, and the opening with the tube closes shut. It's pitch black. I freeze in place and call out, Jesus Christ, what do you want me to do? As panic tried to sell me, I closed my eyes and focused on him alone. Little daughter, I am the light of the world. My light is inside of you. 
open your eyes and walk in my spiritual sight. It's not only the enemy who makes it possible for those with physical eyes to see in the darkness. Open your eyes, excuse me, open your spiritual eyes and walk in the darkness seen through me by my spirit, Holy Spirit, that resides inside you. He replied to my question. So you want me to walk inside the earth where it's completely dark without any lights? I answered back to his reply, which he responded quickly in love, but also a gentle rebuke to my words. Little daughter, did I not say I am the light of the world? And if I reside in you, then you also have become the light of this world. Nothing shall be impossible for my children to do if only they believe. His words stung in their gentle rebuke, but I received them gladly. I'm sorry, Jesus, for doubting. Your word does say that all things are possible to him that believeth in Mark 9, 23. And Matthew 19, 26, you spoke and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Besides, the enemy always copies what you can do for your children because they want so badly to be God themselves. But there's no real comparison because you have all power and the devil's power is really done through deception, illusions, and evil demon spirits. What must I do, Jesus Christ, to see in the dark, I asked. Only believe. Only believe in me inside of you, he replied in love. I do, Jesus, I do, I responded, then declared, in Jesus Christ's name, I will see. I opened my eyes, and to my surprise, it's still totally dark. I opened my eyes, excuse me, I can't see anything. I waited for a moment, then I heard this verse in my mind being spoken. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, I said out loud to Jesus Christ, my love, I'm going to take a literal step of faith, believing in you that when I begin walking, instead of standing here in one place, that my spiritual eyes will open further and through you inside of me, Jesus, my love, I will be able to see and walk in the dark. No reply came. I took one step forward. Nothing happened. Determination set in. I took another step. It's still dark. In Jesus Christ's name, I will see in the dark. Eyes be opened, I said in faith, and then took another step. This time, as my third step ended, I began to see in detail all that was around me. I'm inside a cave-like opening. Father God, Jesus Christ, I exclaimed, I can see in the dark. Thank you, oh thank you, I cried out. This time I heard my lovely Jesus Christ reply, I am the light of the world and those who walk with me in me walk with me in me never have to walk in the darkness nor alone now little daughter follow the holy ghost lead and he will take you where you are needed to go excuse me thank you lord for the water thank you lord Thank you, Lord. He's a good God. Now when I looked around, I'm able to see, but I know it's not because the cave-like area has been lit up with lights somehow. Holy Ghost, my dear friend, which way? I submit myself to you in Jesus Christ's name. 
daughter of Zion, keep walking straight forward. You are near the underground complex, not far from where the Haldron Collider is currently in use. But you are not heading to that location. There is something Jesus Christ, the risen King, wishes for you to hear. Okay, Holy Spirit, lead the way. I began walking forward and soon saw the opening or entranceway leading out of the cave or cavern I was in. It soon connected to other tunnels made into the earth's underbelly, as I call it, since Father God called it that to me when he showed me a vision of creation. Which way, Holy Ghost, I asked, when the tunnel I was in began having multiple tunnels branching off in various locations. Keep going straight, I heard him reply to me. You keep going straight forward until I lead you otherwise. I understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I love you. I love you too, daughter of Zion. I walked for a while. How long? I'm not sure until I felt a strong urgency to take the next right that lay before me. Holy Spirit? I asked questioningly. Yes, daughter of Zion, in the faith, go into the right tunnel. At the end, you will find a set of metal doors. Do not fear. They will open before you, and no one will be on the other side. The angels of God, the Father and Creator of all, of whose spirit I am, has already removed all the alarms and unlocked all the doors in advance for you. They stand ready and on hand when their further assistance is needed by you. Oh, I said, not expecting this at all, but I'm grateful, so very grateful. Thank you, Father God, Jesus Christ, and all of heaven, I said softly, my heart overflowing with the love of Father God inside of it. Even in a moment like this, I felt his great love for me. Come now, Holy Spirit said to me, and then continued, When you walk up to the door, you will be scanned for facial recognition. Again, this is allowed because one of the holy angels will actually be standing in front of you. They will read his face, although it will be that of another. The AI system will acknowledge your entry only at the door without setting off any alarms then it will not be able to recall any more. Wow, I said, impressed by the way my God works. He is such an awesome, big, big God. But wait, Holy Spirit, wouldn't it have been simpler to simply cover me under your barrier of stealth and invisibility, I asked. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. I am daughter of Zion, but you, with your now fully open spiritual eyes, will be seeing how it is being done. Whereas before you would have entered, oblivious to all that was occurring on your behalf, for the enemy not to see or hear you, or even smell your scent, which now smells of the beauty of holiness through Jesus Christ found within your heart. Oh, was all I could reply. I took the tunnel on the right, walking very quickly, silently in Jesus, excuse me. I took the tunnel on the right, walking very quickly. Very soon, the metal doors came into view. I prayed silently in Jesus Christ's name and walked up to the doors. Lights become activated above the doors, and as they did, I saw and felt a heavenly angel step in front of me. All I could really tell is he had long dark hair and was dressed in white. A greenish light came down over the angel of God in front of me, scanning his facial features. Then it stopped. The door on the right opened and I stepped inside. The angel of God was immediately out of my sight once I stepped inside. Wow, way to go, Father God, I thought to myself. Holy Spirit responded to my thoughts. He is the great God of all who reigns in humbleness and love. 
yet too in awesome wisdom and might. Amen, I replied. I looked around and I'm a, I am in a room that has very little inside it, but a computer terminal in front of me and shelves, empty shelves to my left. I saw another set of doors to the left of the computer terminal. I knew in my Holy Ghost knower, this is where I am to go next. I felt Holy Spirit pulling me to the doors. I walked up to them and they opened up immediately into a vast complex. The complex area I entered is an open area with a high ceiling and a hub of activity going on. I looked around for somewhere to hide nearby but saw nothing. Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, what do I do? I heard sweet Holy Spirit say, Remain calm. No one has even noticed you arrived. Walk around the outer edge of the room until you reach the sixth doorway. Here you will enter. How will I know the sixth door from the others? I asked. You can count them or simply walk to the red doors with the serpent upon the doors. This is a room you are to enter. Oh, that's just great, I said to myself. Now we have to deal with the serpent too. What does it matter? I heard Holy Spirit reply to my inner thoughts once again. Your King and Savior, Jesus Christ, God's Son, has defeated them all for you already, and it is He that dwells inside you. Never forget this, daughter of Zion. You're right, Holy Spirit. All they are is a bunch of losers who are eat up with the envy of wanting to be Father God. Yes, daughter of Zion. Now focus. You are about to encounter the reason you are here. Yes, I will, I replied quickly. Back to him. I begin praying again to my lovely Jesus Christ. In his almighty name. Excuse me. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Lord. I quickly began walking around the circular room, and I counted each door as I passed. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, I should have known. Not only are the doors the color red, with the snake covering both doors, there's also another smaller statue of the phony goddess Shiva with a grotesquely shaped body with its four arms. I crinkled my face up in disgust. How can someone believe in such a false god, a fallen angel that was cast out of heaven by the only true god of heaven? Come, daughter of Zion, the angels of God have cleared the way. You may enter the doors undiscovered. I quickly entered the doors, but I was really wishing I didn't have to. It doesn't matter, though. It's Father's God. It's Father God's will over mine in all things. He will protect me, I said within myself. Yes, he will, and he is already, Holy Spirit replied, again answering my thoughts. <clears throat> Excuse me. I pass through the doors undetected, and to my surprise, the room I'm in is very large and open. I heard voices to my left, and I saw a meeting of some sort is in progress, with many people sitting and at an irregular shaped table. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> I repeat this in the name of Jesus Christ. To the right of me, hanging from the ceiling, is a replica. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. To the right of me, <coughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. I canceled these attacks upon my throat and sent them back to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, I do. That's what I'm being told to do. All involved in Jesus Christ's name. Excuse me. 
To the right of me hanging from the ceiling is a replica of our solar system. Our firmament. It's like nothing I have ever seen before. It is actually amazing. I understand that the sun, moon, and stars, these things created by Father God, were movable, including the constellations. So at any given time, they can be moved for whatever season or time was needed to be viewed. In addition, the planets are located there. But in this replica, not everything is revolving around the sun, but the earth. I knew it was created, so when below... I hear you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, all spying will stop. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind all evil spirits sent to spy in Jesus Christ's name. I wrap you up in everlasting chains, dipped in the glorified blood of Jesus Christ, and I throw you into the abyss. I cancel this attack. <laughs> I plead the blood of Jesus over my vocal cords. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, do you wish me to proceed? Spirit that said this, do you believe Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Is Jesus Christ the Son of God? Is Jesus Christ the Lord? Then, Father God, I ask that you send angels down and you stop this attack in the name of Jesus Christ. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I apologize. I'm not going to push through when the Lord's telling me you're being attacked. I didn't pray against spying. Lord, forgive me. All right. But in this replica, not everything is revolving around the sun, but the earth. Lord, wipe their memory too so they don't know what I'm doing in Jesus Christ's name. In all existence known to God, as God exists everywhere. Confuse and confound them, Lord, like you did the armies that were invading Israel. Thank you, Lord. All right. I'm sorry. Please focus. But in the replica, not everything is revolving around the sun, but the earth. I knew it was created so when below ground, the enemy could still plan without being above ground where they might possibly be discovered. The voices again caught my attention. Holy Spirit, I ask, do I walk closer to them or stay here? You must walk closer, but stay in the shadows. You will not be seen at this time, he said. At this time, Holy Spirit? What do you mean, I will not be seen at this time? Am I going to be seen, I asked? But no answer came. I stood still for a moment, pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over me again, then began slowly making my way closer to the table where I could hear and see better. My heart sunk when I saw there sitting at the head of the table is Antichrist, and he is the one speaking. Although we didn't breach the God of Heaven's realm itself, we were successful in breaching the realm in our atmosphere, in our heaven, where so many of the dark lords and spirits were trapped. With the opening that was created, we will be able to travel back and forth with less difficulties. This is now a permanent opening that can be traversed spiritually by portals and by ships. Our friendly aliens are ready to descend. While trapped by the spiritual wall boundaries in the heavens, in the heaven, they were pre they have prepared all that's needed for the inhabitants of the earth and world to accept our fake aliens as the real thing. 
Then the fallen ones are dark lords and some of their Nephilim and spirit-bodied children. Demons, I believe they were once biblically called, he said with a laugh, shall be worshipped even though they will appear as alien life forms. Gods to be worshipped by simple, insignificant mankind. They will be released in conjunction of those created in the restricted area behind the ice wall. There are, there are still enough available that were created for this deception, still accessible to our needs, that's currently outside the restriction of the God of Heaven's ice boundaries. He has now commanded and put into place. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But all that is about to change. My time has come to rule this world, Antichrist said. His eyes looked glazed over with his lust for the power to rule our world. He pauses for a moment and then asked a dark-headed, fair-skinned woman I saw before in another dream concerning this facility. What's the status on the particle discoveries in the Haldron Collider? It's right on course, she replied. But we ran into one small issue. A small issue, Antichrist said. And what might that be, he asked in an unpleasant voice. I don't know how to explain it fully, the woman said. Try, Antichrist said politely, but I could see his jaw had become clenched. Apparently, so did the dark-headed woman, who suddenly seemed nervous. It began during the run during the solar eclipse. We were pulling data on particle discoveries, when suddenly it was as if something sucked the particles like a vacuum out of the collider's path, and then all the information vanished. There's no trace of what was removed except showing something had been previously discovered. Antichrist let out a low, guttural snarl and then said, Those praying saints of the God of heaven and that filthy Nazarene, what else? What else occurred? he asked in a deep, menacing voice. The woman cast her eyes toward a man, and Antichrist turned to focus on him. Speak, he demanded in a terrifying voice. I'm still praying and pleading Jesus, Jesus Christ's blood over me during all this, and that I'll remember all I am called to do with Holy Spirit's help. Thank you, Lord, for the water. The man looked terrified. And I knew what he had to say. He didn't want to speak, but he did. We were unable to pull the full force of power of the sun and moon's alignment with the earth. So in addition to not breaching the God of heaven's firmament and entering his own realm, we were unable to pull through and free all the projected and designated fallen ones, Nephilim, and spirit body children out of the created opening. We pulled some from the moon and other locations, and because of the ending of the age, many were freed and let loose upon the earth. But, the man said and hesitated, But what? Antichrist asked through clenched teeth. But shortly after, some of them were pulled back through the opening and remain on the other side once again, even with the opening still intact. Antichrist let out a string of words that sounded like cursing and swearing, but more like ancient Babylonian. Instead of the accented English I'm hearing him speak prior, even though he's in Europe and Switzerland. Those cuss cuss saints of God, I will kill them every one. Oh, yes, I will, and they will suffer for doing 
daring to intervene in our plans. Wait. Where's she at? Where's the one problem that won't stop no matter what I've sent her way, he snarled. You mean the one called the daughter of heaven's courts? She's back at her current residence in Tennessee. My mouth is hanging open at these words. I am stunned and shocked. Holy Spirit, are they talking about me or another? I asked. Before he could answer, I heard Antichrist say, If she's involved, then she will also petition for all our innocent stored blood to be removed. Give me a status on the stored innocent's blood, especially what we gathered just prior and during the eclipse the Antichrist demanded. The man pulls out a little handheld device, different than an average cell phone. He makes a few selections then his face drains of all color, all its color. Oh no, he said in horror on what he was seeing, what his screen was displaying. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Antichrist knew then someone had prayed and petitioned to the God of heaven to remove the blood because life is found in the blood. And according to the laws of heaven, when a life is taken wrongfully in his holy eyes, it cries up for vengeance. Antichrist, in a great rage, takes his hands and in anger rakes everything laying on the table in front of him off into the floor, including a bottle of what I suppose was an expensive bottle of champagne and a goblet of what I assumed was meant for them to toast their success together. He began to rant. <clears throat> I told Lilith to take her out, not to befriend that one, he yelled out. Lucifer did too, but she wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen, and he cried spat out in anger. Then suddenly he began laughing, and his laughter made me shiver more than his anger. He looked up to the ceiling and spoke these words. God of heaven, you have trained this one well, and she in turn has trained others. But can any of them stand against me, should they not be ready when your filthy son returns? Can she or the others like her withstand the force I shall send against them when I'm in full power? Excuse me. But I'm sharing this in your name. I heard, thank you, Lord, for the water. I heard an audible voice from heaven speak. And although the others didn't hear it, they knew something greater than them all had entered the room. They fell to the floor, cowering in terror at the power and holiness they felt from the words they couldn't hear. O oh, man of sin! My two witnesses have been raised up for such a time as this. My 144,000 have been raised up for such a time as this. My bride, my church, all raised up for such a time as this. Those who are truly mine shall prove true to the very end, because I have tried them in my refining fires she, my daughter of heaven, is just one of many I have raised up to fight against you. She is my daughter, my witness, my warrior through me. What you will be fighting against, O oh man of sin, is not the lukewarm, easily deceived, backslidden saint. But those upon realizing what time they're living in, dug their roots deeper in me. And for those of my children who will not be ready for my return, it will not take them long, though, hunted by you and your forces to become mighty and strong in me. My son, as for your question of wondering who prayed against your plans during the solar eclipse, I will tell you, it was many of my children uniting together. In my name, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, when the warning went out. And you know already 
who I called to witness and testify of your plans. Did she pray also to have the innocent blood removed by my father? Did she pray and petition in the courts of heaven for everything illegally brought through CERN's machines and through the opening now established in the layering of the heaven inside the created firmament to be returned in my name? Ask her yourself, for she stands by my power inside the highly fortified facility complex and room you are in. Antichrist froze in place at those words. I did too. Jesus, why'd you do that? I asked fervently. Don't fear, beloved daughter. I've got you and you've got this, he said. I watched as Antichrist suddenly began looking frantically around. Where are you? He screamed. Show yourself. The other people in the room are still cowering on the floor. Excuse me. Suddenly, I saw an angel of God standing in front of me. I hadn't noticed before. Step out of in front of me. When he did, Antichrist's eyes fixed on me. Hatred, cruel hatred, filled his blue soulless eyes. You, he shouted. I knew it was you. I will kill you. I warned you to keep your mouth shut and to stay out of my business. I will hunt you down and all like you, he spat out in hatred. I looked at him standing there in his fancy black suit, his white crisp button-up shirt with his paisley print maroon tie, plus his shiny black laced-up shoes. And he is not the suave posed man of power our world sees him so often as. Instead, he stands before me as he really is. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. His hands are balled up into clenched fists, and his whole body is shaking with rage. Oddly enough, I do not fear him. I will kill you. I will kill you and all your kind, you cuss, 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 Jesus lovers. I believe this may be one of the few times he actually called my lovely Jesus Christ by his name. I will kill you and your filthy Nazarene too, he yelled out. I looked at him and said, your masters already tried that, remember? Jesus Christ has already conquered death. You will never be able to touch him again, ever, or your masters. Yes, I prayed as the sweet Holy Spirit led me. Yes, I petitioned heaven's court and all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Yes, it was me, but it wasn't me alone. My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, those who were also called, were praying as well. Together we are stronger and our prayers more powerful in Jesus Christ. But we did so by choice out of love and obedience for our Savior and Father God in heaven. You, on the other hand, are nothing more than a puppet on a string that's being pulled by Satan and by Lucifer, who can, be, who can no longer think for himself, I said in the boldness that only comes from Jesus Christ being my Lord and Savior. I will kill you. I'm going to kill you, he shouted and ran toward me. As he did, the angel of God, who had originally been before me, reappeared with the flaming sword in his hand. Man of sin, the angel's voice boomed. This is not your full appointed time or hers. His words and the huge flaming sword in the holy angel's hands made Antichrist stop abruptly. He spoke through clenched teeth slowly. When it's my time, I will kill you. I will hunt your family down, too. Who will stop me then? The darkness brings my rise to power. Then no one will stop me then. Wrong again, Antichrist, I replied. My appointed time to die is when God says it's my time. For he is the giver of life. He determines when one is allowed to die or not even if it's by your hands. I do not fear you, I said, 
nor do I fear your masters. They have already been defeated. When it's my time to die, then I shall die and rejoice that I'm finally counted worthy to spend my eternity with Jesus Christ, the lover of my soul, who is and will always be Lord of all. I will kill you. I will kill you, he shrieked. I will tear your body limb from limb personally myself. And I awoke hearing these threats in my ears. So once again, I began praying for strength for what lays ahead, not only for me, but my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to stand true in you to the very end of however you lead us to go. Here are the verses. First John chapter 3 and 4. Matthew 19, verse 26. Hebrew 11, 1 and 6. Mark 9, 23. Habakkuk 2, 2 through 3. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 12. 1 John 2, 18. Revelation 13, 1 through 18. Daniel 9, 26 through 27. And Daniel 7, verse, verses 15 through 28. Job 33, 14 through 15. Numbers 12, verse 6. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 29, 18. Daniel 2, 19. Acts 17, 25. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Psalms 91, 11. Psalms 103, 20. And 104, 4. I said you take this to the Lord, excuse me, to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Everything needs to be discerned and tried by Him. You try that by by the scripture in 1 John 4, 1 through 3, 13 through 5, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, 2 John 1, 7, so one chapter. The Lord Jesus Christ has made a way for us to understand and hear his voice. Okay, <clears throat> Lord, do you want me to do that now? I'm going to say right up front, excuse me, got water on my mouth. I confess to be nothing and profess to be nothing but a daughter of God. But when you're given dreams and things, you share them and just leave it. You just, Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 through 22 is taken out of context so many times because people do not pull the other verses to hear the full meaning of what Father God says. Deuteronomy 18.20 But the prophet which shall presume, presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing falleth not, nor come nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken in presumptuously, spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. The last incident, the person kept putting, not even once. Okay, you have to be able to determine, is this first of God? Try the spirits. There are instances in the Bible itself where God speaks a word through a prophet, and then God himself changes that word, has a change of heart. That's not true. Yes, it is. Jonah, chapter 3, he goes in and says directly, not repent or you're going to be destroyed. He goes in and says, in 40 days, this place is going to be destroyed, overthrown. We'll read that in just a moment. Deuteronomy 13 
verses 1 through 5 gives us more clarification. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer or dr of dreams and given thee a sign or wonder, <clears throat> a sign or wonder, things have pass, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, wherefore he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Three, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Okay, so there are prophets and dreamers and things that can come to pass that other people have had. But you watch and see, are they leading you away from the Lord Jesus Christ? Are they leading you away from Father God? If you're watching the fruit of somebody and they've given a word or a dream or something and their fruit is proven true, but something changes, you don't automatically say they're false. What you need to do is ask, what's going on, Lord? Why do I say that? I ask, because I've asked the Lord about this many times because this gets thrown up so many times by people that do not search out the scripture. Excuse me. You find Joan again. But in Jonah 3, Jonah delivers, it's only four chapters in Jonah, a direct word from God. Verse 3, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah rose and went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. Verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Yet forty days. Okay, he's saying, this is it. Forty days you're overthrown. Overthrown, destroyed. What happened? That was a direct word from God. He spent the time in the well because he chose to run from God because he didn't want to give this word. The people earnestly repented. The whole city earnestly repent, repented, earnestly repented. And it touched God's heart. And he stayed that judgment. In, in other, he didn't change his mind. This city's been judged, but the judgment now is going to come at a later time, which we know, I believe it's either, I think it's like 400 years later, two or 400 years later. Nineveh is destroyed, as God proclaimed it would be. But they were spared. God moved the date. God himself, after he had declared it was going to be destroyed. It did not say, if you repent, you will not be destroyed. So that's why you have to take it to the Lord Jesus Christ and try the spirits. If you're saying, otherwise, does that mean Jonah is a false prophet? If you stick on just that one word, his word did not come true at that moment in time. Another example, again, Amos 7. The Lord comes to Amos. I'm going to send, he says this twice, I'm going to send fire, I'm going to send uh, the, the, what is it called, locusts, grasshoppers. The Lord repented. He had a change of heart because Amos talked to him. Again, his children can move his heart. And we can stand in the gap and we can cry out for our people. Or we can cry out for a brother or sister. The Lord repented, but they went into captivity. The third time, the Lord said, no. You know, and you know this by the end of the chapter because he is then declaring we're going into captivity. Going in. If that's not enough, the Lord himself goes to Abraham and talks to him, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham talks to him. Abraham was called the friend of God. Perhaps if you can find 50 righteous men, will you spare the city? Yes, I will for 50, 40, 30, 20. God is willing to, to change what he had planned to do if he can find the righteous. But he couldn't and it was destroyed. 
cannot find him. Does that mean God lied? No, it does not. God cannot lie. Need further proof? What about Isaiah? Isaiah was sent to King Hezekiah to tell King Hezekiah, this sickness is unto death. Get your house in order. You are going to die. A direct word from God Almighty. Hezekiah, it says, turned his face to the wall and cried, wept bitterly. Now, Hezekiah was a godly man. God heard his cry and changed his time of death. Before Isaiah made it out of the king's palace or courtyard, I don't remember exactly what it was called, he was still in the king's location, habitat. The Lord said, turn around. Tell them I'll give him 15 more years. And they instructed, he instructed them to put a, a fig on the boil and he was healed. Does that make Isaiah a liar? A false prophet? No, that makes him an obedient one who is not concerned what anybody else thinks. So you've got to try these things and pull all the scriptures. That's why you try them and you watch the fruit. You watch the fruit. Before you make accusations that are going to get you in deep trouble because with what meat you judge someone, you get judged. And I'm saying this in love. Be careful, be careful, be careful. I can handle it. Our new Christians, maybe not so much yet. And you might just cause them to stumble and fall. And then their blood would be on their hands. If they're stepping out in faith. I've had this dream and I've got to share it. It's, I've got to share it. And they share it. And somebody that's been you know, in this thing for a long time. Meaning been a Christian for a long time. Pulls out this word. And because you get the word. It does not mean it's going to happen. It feels like it's going to happen immediately. But God always warns in love. Example. I have been warning about war coming since 2019. Many people laughed and scoffed. You can see the proof. It's about to hit now. Why? Because God in love warns us, gives us time to prepare, to get our house in order, to reach all we can. So let's quit tearing our brothers and sisters down and be careful who you talk about because if you talk about somebody that's even once been saved, truly had the blood of Jesus Christ applied in their hearts, even if they're living in sin, they've been touched by God Almighty. <coughs> and His Word says in Psalms 105, Touch not my anointing, and do my prophets no harm. Who is God's anointed? Those who've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. I don't usually even bother to answer anybody like that. But if something's put up somewhere that is going to cause somebody to fall, and I'm going to call it out of ignorance of not fully studying the Word of God without researching, you, you, you're not supposed to take <coughs> one scripture or a group of scriptures without pulling all the other scriptures together. For example, I had a lady ask a question in, in the prairie mill. And she was, and, and it was a valid question. She was asking about the dream I had where rapture came in darkness. And in Matthew 24, it talks about um, the man out in the field working and the woman grinding in the, the, the well house. And she said, This, you know, how can this be in the darkness? And, and it was a legitimate question. I had no problem answering it. I, Immediately, the Lord told me, you need to go to the other scripture where it talks about that. Because it also mentions, and now it says two men in the bed. It didn't say that before, but 
two men in the bed, one will be taken, one will be not. It's symbolic that Jesus Christ can come at any time. It can be night, it can be day, it can be middle of working. You know, it's just simple. Pulling all the scriptures. I asked the Lord, and he said, she needs to be helped. She, she, she needs, you need to answer this, and you need to, I said, okay, Lord, you know. And that's why it's so important to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because when you pull just some of it out of context, just pull the verse, you don't get everything. That's how a lot of false doctrines have been started. So please pray about this late before Jesus Christ. When you see somebody giving a word or a dream, you're supposed to watch that person's fruit. What kind of fruit is coming from that ministry or, or their life that they're leading if, you, if you're able to, to life? Are they repeatedly being the same? Are they leading you to Jesus Christ or away? These are things to look for. Even people that started out well can veer off course, can be deceived or led astray. That's why you try every single thing. Every single video. Every single word you read. Everything you put into your eyes, into your ears. Even if you're watching a Christian movie, you still try that. Is there something in here, God, I don't need to see? Just because it has a title does not mean it's something God wants you to participate in. Please pray about all this. If you ask the Lord, He will reveal these things. I simply asked Him and said, Okay, Lord, I know this, these scriptures in Deuteronomy says this, but I know what First John says, and I know you're supposed to watch the fruit, and you have shown me yourself how that things can change. You took me to Amos 7. You took me to Hezekiah. You took me to Abraham and Jonah. Because I didn't know when I first started out warning, I didn't know, and I got bashed horribly over and over, especially by so-called friends, you know, so-called friends. Where if this doesn't happen, you're a false prophet, even though the events aren't playing out now. What do I do? I forgive them. Just forgive them. I know nothing about all this. I didn't study prophecy much. I only study it now as the Lord leads. Take it to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. And this is the way you should do every subject. Not just about the prophetic word or dreams or visions. Anything. Pull all the scripture. Ask Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. John 14, 26. He is our teacher. Now there are some words that God gives that's called unconditional prophecy. He will not change them at all. They are set in stone. And a lot of people think that's the way every word is. It is not when you go through scripture. But the unconditional, they're not unmovable. They're unchanging. Which means, for example, there will be a root out of Jesse. There will be a Savior called Emmanuel. There will be the Son of God will come. Jesus Christ will come to this earth. Born of a virgin. Unconditional. Antichrist will rise and will rule for seven years unconditional. Jesus Christ will come in the battle of Armageddon and will defeat them. And the false prophet and Antichrist will be thrown alive into the lake of fire. Unconditional. Set in stone. Within all the circumstances around it to bring it to pass. Written, but not unconditional. If he's moved by his heart, he can change. Push it back. Bring it forward. He's God. If we say he cannot or will not, we are limiting him. He is all powerful. He is all powerful. And he does not care whether you like him doing that or not. And he does not care whether you believe or not he can do that. He's going to do what he does. He is God. He has always been. And he will always be. He will not change for you. He will not change for me. Because he is just. He is righteous. And he is perfect in all his ways. He does not need sinful man trying to tell him how to live and how to how to rule. And when it's all said and done, 
We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, but we are still a sinful natured body. He does not need us trying to tell him how he should run this world, how he created all things, because we want it to be this and what. Well, you said this was coming now, God. It's got to come now. What if he stopped it and pushed it back for your husband to be saved because you cried out for them to be saved? Or for your neighbor? Or so someone will not die a horrible death, but because you prayed and asked for mercy, they're going to die quickly. We don't know the full picture. These are things God has pointed out to me. Be careful how you pray, daughter. Be careful how you pray. Pray my will be done. Let my will be done. Don't tie my hands. Yes, there's verses that talks about he was unable to move. Even Jesus was unable to heal a lot of people because of doubt and unbelief. Don't tie Father God or Jesus Christ's hands. Even Holy Spirit, when they're there to help, help you to live victorious. And don't judge one another unfairly. If you're called to judge through the Holy Spirit, you make sure and try the spirits that it is of God. There's times you have to call sin out, but you can do it in a way that's godly, in a way that doesn't cause you to be judged harshly. Please pray about all this. When it's all said and done, God is God. He will always be God. I am the Lord God. I change not. Malachi 3.6 Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. They are eternal. They are forever and everlasting. And they will not change. They will not change. Nor do they have to because they're perfect in every way. That's how, in their perfection, they're able to give perfect love. Please pray about this. Father God, do you want me to ask for prayer? Just end it by giving that. All right. If you want to contact us, this is the My Lovely Jesus Ministry. You can reach us at prayer, pray, excuse me, pray, at my lovely Jesus Ministry dot info info, you can contact us for anything else, questions or anything else. Questions at my lovely Jesus dot info. We will get to them whether we answer or not. We are praying over everything that comes in. Some questions I still have not answered concerning the darkness, concerning things that people need to be seeking the Lord themselves. Even questions about the word, about the solar eclipse. These are things you as children of God need to seek God. I have delivered the word, delivered the dreams. And I will answer what the Lord leads. But if you do not get an answer, you need to be seeking Jesus Christ for your answers. You need to seek him. You need to have that relationship and not depend on me or someone else to give you an answer. When I have done my part, pray about this. All right, from Tennessee, God bless. It's it's 11.22 p.m. here. I did not know this was going out. Stay under the blood, always. And Lord willing, with his help, that's where you'll find me. I want to be as close to Jesus Christ and Father God as I can. I want to hide under the shadow of his wing and stay there forever. God bless from Tennessee.